history. Your ancestry. We want your address, your phone, your contacts, their phone, when you're home. We want your lunch, your dinner, shopping list, your diet, a heart attack. We want your car, the make, the speed, the holidays you took, the fake details in your logbook. We want your kids, their names, their school, your pets, your pics, your favorite hits. We want your movies, TV, your downloads, the truth, and when you like. Welcome to a weird time slot. Yes, Wednesday night. What the hell am I doing on YouTube live on a Wednesday night? Well, I think you could probably work it out considering it's written all over the title and subject of this video. I've got something exciting to show you guys. And yes, it's the ATEM Mini Pro ISO edition. It's only just come out from Blade Magic Design. I was uh, pretty quick on the purchase uh, add to cart button and hopefully I'm one of the first who have gotten one. I know there's a few videos out on this already, but um, I've only literally just got this today. I haven't even opened it yet. So uh, yeah, um, I thought I'd share it with you, my experience with opening it and everything like that. Let us know if you can hear me, um, if you think my audio is okay, everything like that. Uh, just give us a bit of feedback in the chat. G'day to Hanway Wiesner who's jumped in. Um, and yeah, I've got... Uh, I will be looking at you guys in the chat and nothing's coming up yet uh, on the other side there because there's not enough, it has to scroll a little bit, but it'll, it'll start appearing in a sec. Um, yeah, and also we're going to obviously check this baby out. Yes, I haven't even, it's still got the shrink wrap on it, so I haven't even opened it. So you guys will be seeing my reaction, listening to me talk about it uh, at the same time. I know that's exciting for you guys, but... Um, you know, new products are exciting. Now, okay, so what we'll do is we'll probably wait for a few other people to join us because there's only a couple people right now, but let's just get everything set up. So um, I will unbox it in front of you. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit about why I've got this when I've already got another ATEM Mini already in my possession, which is sitting over there just behind me. Uh, I might even have a better camera shot of that if I, I think I've got my actual A10 Mini plugged in. So there it is in the bottom uh, corner, right hand corner over there, the A10 Mini. That's the that's the, the original A10 Mini that came out. Um, so uh, what is the difference between that and, and this one? Um, and that's a really, really excellent question. Well, it actually brung brung <laughs> they've actually brought out two other um models since the original a10 mini which is over there they brought out the a10 mini pro without the iso next to it so it's like that and then they've brought this one out just now as well so um and i'll tell you a little bit about the differences between them so um we'll we'll have a little discussion this one is probably more suited for us as musicians and YouTubers and streamers. And um, this will probably be more up our alley, I think. Um, so I want I do want to talk about my experience with being a YouTuber as well. And hopefully you guys can 
can see, you know, the logic behind why I've got it. And maybe that might help you either not or buy or whatever, procrastinate, <laughs> just like I do, whatever the decision may be. Anyway, so um, yeah, so let's have a look now. I should be getting socials in and I don't know why it's not working. Why are you not working socials? Um, probably because I need to press that button there. Uh, yep, okay, socials are working, beautiful. I can flag socials um, in the bubble down below. So for example, um, let's just add Anyways, comment there and you should see it appear any second right down in the green bubble below. The magic will come and things will happen. Hey, there we go. <laughs> so you can see it right down the bottom. If we need to flag anyone's comments, we can do that or some. Cool. Right, now I don't want to sort of hang around too much with this. We've got not many people on yet. And it's not a very, it's not going to be a lot of people watching this, I don't think, anyway. So, um, I just need to, I've just been real sort of struggling to get things set up tonight. Uh, I can't even hear myself. Here we go. I can hear myself now. I'm going to turn the options on in the mixer. Right. Okay. What else can we do? We've got chat running. We've got uh, cameras set up. All right. You guys ready? Um, jump into the chat. Let us know who is there, where you're from. Say hi. Um, yes, we're going to be opening up this box uh, in a sec. I'm just trying to get... A few more people jumping in uh, so yeah just jump into chat say hi uh, if you're busy um, I do know there's another show coming on in about an hour or two so I want to get this wrapped up pretty quick so uh, if you can spare a moment jump into chat and say hi okay let me just quickly check I didn't really give this any notice to people so I'm not expecting a, a million people to jump in right okay all right, let's get this. Let's get the show on the road. We are going to need a knife. Yes, we're going to open it. Um, okay, let's go to this. What's probably the best view? I think this this view here would be pretty good. All right, so we're going to open it up. Uh, just cut a bit of the plastic. Okay, now no, nothing really that ex exciting about unboxing, I guess. But um, I guess it's kind of my reaction at the same time as you guys. We've got Sean from London, are you going? Nice to meet you, mate. Hopefully uh, this may be exciting for you. That's just plastic, so there's nothing special about that. It's probably full of coronavirus. All right, let's just have a little bit of a look what they're saying on the box, and, and then we're going to find out inside whether this is all true. Um, I do have a lot of respect for Black Magic Design. They're a great company. They're actually, I didn't even know this, but they're actually Australian, which has nothing to do with the fact that I'm Australian. It's just pure coincidental. Um, okay, so what this feet, what they're saying on the front here is this is a multi-camera live streaming to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and more. It includes hardware live streaming, multi-view monitoring, plus a new multi-camera input recording to the USB device or USB disks for editing. I will talk about that in a sec. It does include uh, ATEM software control. I've already got that installed, so we won't have to worry about that too much. Um, but I guess what they're saying here is that these four inputs, which we'll get to see in a sec on the back, you'll be able to record this uh, with a USB thumb drive or a USB disk attached to the USB-C connection on the back of this, and it records each one of the inputs independently not only that it actually records uh so if you make uh like a little sort of uh, a show and then you're changing from cameras and you're doing autos and cuts and fades to black and using all the sort of video switchy features it records that as well and it records it as a da vinci resolve project so not only will it record each individual input separately it also records the actual main output as well. So technically it's like a five output, uh, five video channel. So the, the, you know, the output of the, what you've done here, what you've produced, plus also the original sources. And on top of that, it also records the two audio inputs that you've got on the back of this. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, what else? 
Um, I don't think there's really anything else on here that's kind of groundbreaking. So let's let's get it open. I think you guys have had enough of this crap. So now the box is a little bit bent. It's the best way to go about this. I like these little, you know, welcome things and tells you what to do, download a manual, things like that. Software installer, all that sort of stuff. Black Magic Design sticker. You can chuck that on the car. People will think, what a fanboy that. This is important. So if you do get the ISO, this one um, is probably going to help you. Uh, so DaVinci Resolve is like Photoshop, not Photoshop, uh, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro. It's not an, it's a, but it, <laughs> major difference is it's free. Okay, right. Let's put that aside for a sec. Oh, geez, sorry, I just banged into the mic then. I do apologize for that. Right, so it, it comes with a uh, international style power adapter with all sorts of various country type connectors there. And somewhere in here is the weird one that we use in my country. There it is there. So we're going to need this, that's for sure. Uh, so let's get that connected up. We'll do that. Is there a trick to this? Here we go. All right, and that's the power supply sorted. All right. And there she is. The eight. Not even. It's not even in a plastic wrap. I actually noticed that with the other ATEM that I got. So it's not even. I mean, I guess the outside of the box is plastic wrap, but you'd think a plastic wrap is interesting. Not to worry, uh, I'm sure if it doesn't work, I can send it back, <laughs> which will be a pain. Okay, there it is. Uh, it's exactly the same size as the other ATEM, exactly the same. Look how small it is. I mean, you can see my hand. It's very, very small. Um, and okay, so what is really, really interesting about this is probably the connectivity, and this is probably going to help you guys. So let's flip it around. I do not, I, I've never used one of these before personally, this actual model. I've got another ATEM I've used, so I do know a little bit of ATEMs. Um, but what I can tell you is the this uh, RJ45 or Ethernet port is extremely important on this model. Whereas the other one, it just uses it for connectivity. This one actually uses it for an internet connection. The USB-C is important because that's where you're going to be recording to. HDMI out is the, is actually you can, you can select which, um, whether it's the main output or whether you want actually a, uh, like a program view, which we can have a look, multi view or something. These are all your HDMI inputs here. You've got four of them. And remember I was saying before, it does have two audio inputs. And um, there's some controls on the top with that as well. So, uh, so yeah, let's, um, let's plug it in. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Find a spare power socket. How are we gonna connect this up? is the $60,000 question. Notice that it didn't come with any uh, HDMI cables or um, anything, no USB cables, nothing. It's literally just the power cable and the unit itself. And I'm making a massive mess here, trying to find a spare power socket. There we go, turn it on. Now, I can just move that out of the way. All right, can we zoom in a bit so you guys have a bit of, it's out, zoom in. Oops. Get rid of that out the way. All right. So, okay, let's, the other thing we're probably gonna need to do is chuck this into a network and, uh, see if we can connect it up, chuck a USB-C cable in, see if we can connect that up to it as well. So yeah, um, I didn't even realize it didn't come with any of that. So I guess that's the first thing. So I'm gonna to need to find a, a USB-C cable, a HDMI out. Okay, I've got a HDMI out here. So let's grab that. Let's use that one. Okay, so let's... What I'll do is I'll plug that into a capture card I've got running into the stream so that we can actually see what the HDMI out looks like. 
Just out of curiosity, I wonder if there's anything coming through on that now. Um, I'm going to find it first. There it is there. Okay, so we do have something on the screen. Um, obviously, there's no inputs at all on the HD, on the uh, ATEM. So we probably should give it a few video inputs. That should probably help us a bit. Um, okay. I guess one of the things we could use is a little camera here. We could put that in there. So give me a sec. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go and grab a couple of cables. Hey, you going, Joe? Joe says, uh, "Let's go to Joe." Are these coming up yet? Why are these not coming up? Let's go to here. Joe says, uh, "I'm broke, living. Give me a good budget option for a MIDI keyboard, please. Thanks, man. Um, I like Blade Magic." As a company, they make good quality products overall. Yeah, um, <sighs> MIDI keyboard. What what sort of keyboard do you need? MIDI keys? I mean, there's so many options, mate. MIDI keyboards, honestly. Uh, I I tend to I tend to like um, more quality. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I, I I mean, here I've got a a little Arturia key step. They're pretty good for budget, but they're not proper size keys. They're just little mini keys on it. But that takes up so little room. Um, and I've actually got another one. Um, where's the better view? So where I'm sitting, literally, I don't know if you guys can see this when I pull it out. No, it's not quite in camera. So literally, I've got a drawer just under this desk here. And there's another, um, what do you call it? Key step, Arturia key step. They're pretty cheap. Um, yeah, maybe our true key set. There's another one that came out just recently, the uh, Akai MPK uh, Mark III. It's also pretty small, and I think there's uh, Novation do a small one as well. So there's probably three in that sort of market, but I'd say the Arturia key steps are better because uh, it's got a bit of connectivity on it. Like uh, it's got some features. So maybe check out the sort of features of each and see which one you feel is better. But this video is not about. MIDI keyboards. Okay, so uh, let's go back to let's go back to that view for a sec. Now let's get something happening on the camera. Give me one sec. I'm just going to grab a HDMI cable. <laughs> the gear, yes, the gear. Help us all. HDMI cable time. All right, I've got a HDMI cable. Now, I probably should show you guys what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to connect this up to port number one. I literally have a th so many cameras here I could connect up. It's not funny. But we'll just use this one for now. This is the little microscope camera that I just recently had right in front of me. We'll turn it on, and if everything goes well, we should have an image. Um, we do have an image. All right, let's go across. So this is the this is the multi-program output. Um, this is what you'll see if you you don't have to have this as your main. Uh, HDMI output, but this is by default. So what you can see top right hand corner is the program output. That is actually what would be streaming or recording. The preview, I don't know if you ever get in yourself into uh, video switches, but the preview is kind of like what you've got queued. And um, you've got these controls, uh, these controls here, which will go from your different preview modes. Okay. Um, we can go across that later on. Uh, and then you've got camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. That's what is the actual input of each of those camera feeds. So I'm going to chuck another camera in in a sec. Um, in fact, hmm, what would be interesting is 
this camera that I've got, which is the up overview camera, I could actually pipe that into the ATEM. Hmm, that's actually a pretty cool idea. All right, let me do that. I need to grab a cable. One sec. Okay, I just made a bit of a noise, so I just muted my mic for a sec there. All right, so I've got another HDMI cable. This one is a HDMI to HDMI micro, I think they call that one. It's a tiny little one. So we need to plug the HDMI into the ATEM. And we're going to lose this view in a sec because I'm going to disconnect it. So I'm going to merge across to here. And I'm going to route some cables. And we're going to lose that. And we are going to gain a bit of luck. Hey! Hey! It works like a champ. See, there you go. So there's my top camera now working on the ATEM. And I can just literally cut to that. That's really, really cool. Um, yes, it's upside down. But that's because the camera is actually permanently upside down. And I flip it. Um, which you can do on this, by the way. You can flip and stuff like that. Right, what else? Okay, so we can click on auto here and we can we can change between this and this, which is pretty cool. I like this. I like this. All right, what else can we do? Well, <clears throat> one of the things um, I guess what I'm going to talk about with this is I got uh, the ATEM Mini Pro ISO for one really specific reason, and that is but when I do my live shows, I like to have video guest callers coming in on the show, and um, they will use up internet bandwidth. Uh, I've got two internet connections here in my home, home studio, and um, I guess when I'm running a show and I'm actually streaming out from here, plus I'm actually getting these callers coming in, if I have more than three or four callers, it really, really struggles. Hi, Inky. Um, so I needed a solution where I could take the callers in on one internet connection and stream out on the other, which would literally free up those two bottlenecks. And so what this will give me is this gives me the ability to stream directly from the box. Now, notice that there's no PC or computer or Mac or anything involved. I can I could literally uh, find an internet connection anywhere and stream. So I don't actually need to lug a laptop or anything with me. Um, and that's what that uh, ethernet port is on the back here. So we're gonna, we're gonna chuck that in later and we're gonna have a look at that. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stream on it, but <clears throat> we'll definitely be having a look at it anyway. So I do like the, uh, I do like how the camera is actually picking up my audio there. You can see under cam two, you can hear me, well not hear me, but you can see me speaking. Um, and it's picking up my audio through the internal mic on that camera. You, that's not what you're actually hearing. Is my, you're hearing my actual mic just here. But that's nice. That's nice little aspect on the bottom right-hand corner there. Um, you also notice too on the bottom left-hand corner there's a media player. Now it's it's a bit it's a bit misleading. Basically, what you would use that media player for is for still graphics and lower thirds doesn't do things like videos or um, any sort of fancy stuff. It's actually really more for, this is the video world, so it's different too. It's not like a PC or anything. Uh, I actually don't really know what these other two screens are for, but I would guess it's got something to do with recording and streaming uh, at a guess. I haven't even seen this before. So yeah, so that's actually really, really cool. Um, all right, what I'd like to do now is I'd actually like to be able to get the, uh, I guess, the view uh, of the A10 Mini, um, that main output that we're seeing on that top, the program, it's called, on that top right-hand corner. 
So I'd like to see if I could get that back into here somehow. Uh, so I'm probably, for me to do that, I'm probably going to need to connect up a, a USB C cable. So we'll do that. Um, one second while I grab one. Okay, I am having trouble finding a USB-C cable at very, very short notice. But what I did find is a Ethernet cable, which we are going to need. So let's open that up. Brand new one, so we know it's working fine. Uh, I'll need to plug that into the back of my Ethernet port down there somewhere. Okay, just give me a sec. Okay, that's connected. It's all of a sudden, you guys started to see some lights flashing and stuff. And you get this on-air light flashing here as well. All right. What I need to do, though, is I need to get this ATEM software running. So we're going to do... What's it displaying to me? All right, so let's get the software up and running. Blackmagic Design, and it's called ATAM Software Control. And I'm just gonna show you guys merge here. Now, which ATAM is this? I think this might be the other ATAM. There's only one way to find out, and that's to click on something. Yeah, so that's the other ATEM. All right, so I need to go into connection. Hey, look at that. ATEM switches on the network. It's finding both of them now. So let's go to ATEM Mini Pro and click connect.
maybe it need us might need us to set this up so let's set it up okay which one have we got okay so it's asking me to sorry you guys can't see this because it's off screen it's asking me to check address hopefully it finds it I can show you guys that. No, it's not. Let me move it. There you go. I don't know why it's not finding it. Um, okay, so that's the mini. Right. So that connects to that. This is this uh, setup software. So I need to add. I need to find out what's what the um, the IP address is. Okay, okay, all right. That is going to be a little bit of a pain to do in the middle of a live stream. Um, I guess if I connected it up via USB, it probably wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but I can find out the IP address. Just give me a second. Um, I need to go to my router. These things are all fun and games until someone's eye gets poked out. I'm just trying to find out what the IP address of it's given this thing. It should show me on my network map, I guess, advanced. Um, then. Network. Sorry, one second. I'm just trying to find this IP address, and it is being a pain because I don't know how to use this router. Um, I thought there was an option here to look in the LAN network, LAN settings. Here we go, DHCP, that's what we want. And we should get ATEM Mini somewhere here. Interesting, it doesn't actually show anything here. I'm going to see if it's this last one. Let's try that. Okay. Add. Let's see if it's that. Doesn't look like it is. Uh, this is a pain. Um, it's not easy for me to work out how to get this thing on to the network. It definitely is showing, though. Connection again. It does show here. I show it here. See, it shows it there. But it doesn't show it on the setup. If I click connect here. Yeah, okay. I, I, just, I don't know what's going on there. And that's making this stream a bit boring. Sorry, guys. Really apologize for that. Oh, I need to work that out later. Okay. So in terms of that, we are going to have to revisit that at another time. Sorry. I'm going to have to just connect that there so you can see that. Go back to here. Cool. Right. Okay, so I've got two video sections connected to this now. I've got the microscope camera. So you'll see under program, if I press one, see how it changes the program, the top right hand corner. And if I press two, it changes that. But you can see the actual individual cameras are still showing 
down the bottom. That's actually really, really cool. I like that. Uh, all right, so across this top, let's have a look at this panel anyway. Now, I'm going to probably have to go back to my other connection to show you this better because it's more of a close-up. Does it come back? It does. All right, more of a close up. Okay, so zoom in a bit. These um, these two sections here are to do with your mic inputs. So literally, uh, you've got that on and off. I, I don't understand why it's on and off. Why it doesn't just be one toggle button but this is just how the video world works it's a little bit different to the audio world i just noticed these are some of the quirky things anyway uh, on and off and then you've got this up and down arrow now that is literally just increasing and decreasing the gain and you can actually see it do that in the in the software which i was going to show you before but it doesn't seem to be connecting right now um these uh groups of buttons here are the same so they are all respective for each of the video inputs okay so af afv stands for audio follow video so that means <clears throat> if you've got cameras that you want the audio to be connected to the video it will mute uh, any of the other audios and only play the audio of that active video channel that's what that does i don't usually use that um and these are the audio settings for that camera so this has actually got nothing to do with video even though it's the video channel but this is the audio settings for that video um okay what else is it is uh so that's all the same for that then you've got still and you've got black now still is if we go back to here if we loaded something in uh that media player down the bottom left hand corner you use the software to do it we hit still and it will show us that. So if you had a photograph there or something like that, you could you could use that. Uh, black just actually makes the screen black. Um, so black's important because in video world and editing and that, it um, people use black. Fade to black is another feature over here, FTB. So um, all right. I actually don't know what these duration buttons do um, you've got picture and picture so I guess you could set one top left hand bottom left hand bottom right hand top right hand corner so if we turn that on yeah let's have a quick look at that it's in the program output you can see how it's black and it's just got that camera one in that top and if we change the buttons we can see it going into those corners for us you can turn it off that's pretty handy and that was just those buttons there um what else we got these are kind of like your um transition effects which affect here on the auto so i've got it by default set to mix which is what i prefer um but these are like swipes blinds just a couple there's not that many dip um you can have a look so to plug my camera back in so you can see it give it a sec it pops up all right so if we if we change it from mix to we'll change it for the top one from here first and i change the camera one see how it swipes it across all right, that's that one. And this one should swipe it down. It's like a little swipe. It's quite nice. And then you've got, it's like an arrow pointing to the right. So I'm guessing it moves it to the right. Yep, there you go. And then the other, the other one is kind of a page turn, which is kind of a bit cheesy. And the other one, the last one is dip. So dip goes to white. My, per, my preference is mix. It just it like merges the two together. 
So that's that. All right. <coughs> Change the camera back. Okay. So that was those buttons there above the auto. Uh, it's hard to see with that light. There you go. You can see. There's an auto. There's a, there's a bit where you can see or anyway, if I turn that off, you can see auto. Okay, what else you got? Video output. So um, multi-view is what we're looking at uh, over here. If I change it to program, the HDMI output will just output whatever is in the program. Which So, so that's the top right-hand corner. Okay, so if I change that button there, it'll output through the HDMI port there to whatever I set. So I can actually force it to just output camera one. And it doesn't matter what I do here. I'm pressing all these buttons on the ATAM. It will just stay at camera one. So there you go, that's pretty handy. Um, and all this stuff up here is to do with streaming and recording. So um, on air would be streaming. Um, stop and record is for the disk recorder. So you've got your USB-C connection here, which we haven't got set up yet because I couldn't find the cable quick enough. Uh, okay. What else? Um, okay, so the other thing I guess would be that DaVinci Resolve side of, side of things. And let me just... Uh, Get something up for you guys. If you've never seen DaVinci Resolve, uh, you're about to see it. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to turn it on. DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve. Where are you, DaVinci Resolve? I think it's just called Resolve. Ah, there it is. Sorry. Uh, I have no idea what that cache and full is, by the way. It's flashing on the screen. Um, so I probably need to read up a bit more on the manual. Um, there's a, like I said, there's a few new features in here that I've never seen. So we will get there eventually. But I kind of, what I wanted to quickly show you is just how it works briefly. And then um, just waiting for this DaVinci Resolve to start up. It's pretty big piece of software. So this is kind of like... Adobe Premiere. This is like a video video editing suite. Um, and I'm gonna show it over here in a second once it decides to start up. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's exciting waiting for software to start. CPU eleven percent, so it's not CPU. I don't know what's going on. I can't move this window because it's one of those boot up windows. Give it a second. There, you can look at my desktop. Isn't it exciting? I'm wondering if it's not happy with me running vMix in the background, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, whilst v uh, DaVinci Resolve boots up, uh, version 16 is free. And you just download it from the Blackmagic Design website. Um, now, one of the things I'll say, I, I haven't used it a lot. I'm very new to it. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is if you're doing multi-camera uh, videos, so you've got, say, uh, like my setup over, let's go to me for a sec. So you can see over here, I've got my you know, my multiple cameras. I've got a camera there, a camera there, another camera over here, another camera up high, uh, and there's even a camera there behind me. Um, and they're all connected in. So when you've got them all connected in and you're editing that later on, I actually find DaVinci Resolve much, much more sort of easy to understand. Here we go. Let's boot it up now. Okay, let's get that into... Uh, just give me a second. I'll just load, I'll load this old project, see if that helps us. There we go. Uh, 
Um, it probably didn't like me changing the screen size. Ah, it doesn't matter. Who cares? All right, DaVinci Resolve. Here we go. Okay, probably not the best view ever, but you've got different kind of views. Um, it's weird. What's going weird about this? Everything looks really big. Anyway, down the bottom, you've got your different views. So you've got um, media view, your cut view, which is handy. You've got an editing view. And then you've got all these other things called fusion and color and fairlight. Now, fairlight is something that you guys will, will actually love. I think fairlight is absolute killer for audio people like us. Um, it's literally a full-blown uh, audio editing suite, and I can, it doesn't show it very well here uh, because it's not in 4K. Um, how can I do this? How can I do this? Let me just change my view. Close that, add another input. Let's change that to display one. And then we'll go move that across here. There we go. That's a better view. I don't know why it wasn't showing properly. So on a different monitor, it, it's just beautiful. Like it's got these are your these are like your tracks. Um, you've got your master, you've got control room loudness, uh, you've got a whole bunch of uh, so this is like your um, audio, um, what do you call it, your audio waveforms. Uh, you can zoom in on this stuff as well. And then over to the right, you've got like a little mixer. And there's like a small track mixer, full track mixer, um, and plugins as well. So I think you can add all these plugins. So if you've got like VSTs, it will work as well. So like, for example, I had, uh, I think it was uh, yeah, some RX6 and NS1. So these are some plugins that I've even installed before I even installed this. So that's actually really, really cool. And uh, let me show you those other screens before. So that's the, that's the video media uh, thing. So you can actually, it's actually really cool. This is the editor, which I actually really like. Um, and you kind of have these different scrollers. So um, that will scroll you through the whole video. And this one here, so that will get you somewhere direct. And this one here, you can actually, you know, you can drag clips and things like that. It's so handy. And then you've got this one, which is the, the editor. Uh, so editing is kind of like another view, um, and this is handy for that multicam thing. So uh, that's pretty cool. I don't really know much about Fusion. I think it's more like video effects and stuff, so I haven't even really looked at that yet. Um, it might even balk. I haven't seen any of this yet, so maybe watch a video on that yourselves. Color is uh, all to do with video color correction. So um, if you've got like a color profile that you like to use, uh, and I'll give you an example, Tim Showbridge, who does a lot of those uh, videos that you guys see, he uses a color correction on his videos. So, he, you know, if you see his videos, it's got a different sort of color uh, tinge to it. He does that. There's a few others that do. So you can actually set sort of your colors up here, and um, it's really, really nice. And you've got Deliver, which is kind of, more to do with uh, the actual exporting. So you can actually, you can, there's quite a lot you can do in here. You can you can actually deliver it straight to YouTube, Vimeo, and a few other options, or you can just deliver it to your hard drive, and then you, you've got a whole bunch of uh, exporting format customizations in here. You can go right into advanced. It's massive. Now this is like just remember this is free. Okay. Now let's go back to um, to me for a sec. 
because I need to disable that view now. Um, yeah, so just remember kind of that this whole thing with this A10 Mini is it's um, it's going to output that that video that you've just made through all of these inputs. And it's going to save it onto a USB drive, and then it's going to create a ATEM, uh, sorry, a uh, DaVinci Resolve project. So literally, all you have to do, this is where the workflow becomes very simple for us. All you have to do is, if you aren't one hundred percent sure that you got some of the transitions right when you were you're playing your synths and then you changed a few camera angles and you weren't happy with it, it will record every single camera from start to finish. So you can go back and add another camera in. You can go back in, uh, edit where that transition started and finished. This all that is all ready for you to do. You just pipe it back into um, DaVinci Resolve and do that. So that's something that I'm going to show you guys in another video once I get this set up. Obviously, I couldn't get it connected for now. Um, but I mean, I even still, I wouldn't have shown you that today anyway because it's too hard. Um, and obviously, on the other side of it is the the streaming side as well. So multiple outputs, multiple recording, uh, two audio channels. Now, one, one thing I will mention about the audio channels um, is that they are 3.5-millimeter uh, uh, audio channels. There's nothing special about them. They're not like they're stereo. So if you, if you input something like a phone, um, you know, using the 3.5-millimeter cable stereo, it will take a stereo input. So you've actually got two stereo inputs there but they're not balanced so you're not getting any sort of ground loop protection so if you you'll need to have your own external ground loop protection on that you do <clears throat> with these cheaper devices you do get susceptible to ground loop because hdmi is also just like usb you no know, just the same with you guys when you're using those roland aero products you're getting ground loop noise on those as well so just practice all those best practices it's not atem's fault it's just the technology that's out there um, but I, I don't find as an issue with it. I, what I do is I run my Zoom uh, H6, which is just there, and I actually, when I record, I record my voice just off battery, so there's no power going into that into that microphone in, um, and then I never get any ground loop noise. Uh, I don't. I have all the cameras audios turned off, just like you can see here, they're all off, so I don't need any audio coming in from any of the cameras. And it's literally it'll one of these will be turned on, and that's it. Um, and <clears throat> that's how it all syncs up the audio up. And the audio obviously comes straight out of uh, my main output of one of my mixes. So uh, sometimes I'll use the MX one, which is up there. Sometimes I'll use the um, the other mixer, which that's the other mixer gone. Oh, you can't see it. That's right. The Presonus, which is down there. Um, yeah, so I mean that's kind of that's how you use it. I know. Now I have been completely ignoring the chat people, and it's been difficult to do that. There we go. A few people asked a few questions. We haven't had many any questions. All right, cool. How long are we going for? Almost an hour. I think that's probably enough for now. Anyway, you guys have seen it. Um, so um, next video we will probably delve into this a little bit deeper um i think I, what i need i'd like you guys to see is how the multi-record works on this i'd like to show you the streaming so maybe on saturday night when we do the live stream i will stream off this so that'll be a good test uh so saturday saturday night for me saturday morning for some of you some saturday afternoon for some of you i'll stream um, and we'll see how that works. And I mean, technically all I have to do is just grab the output of this computer that I'm actually streaming from right now and as a HDMI, like a monitor connection and just import it into this and it'll stream that. So that's actually pretty simple in, in my, in my mind. Um, we'll have a look at the, the recording side of it too, the, the multi-cam recording. I want to look at all the different files it creates on the USB and things like that. I was hoping to do that kind of tonight, but um, yeah. I couldn't find, a, couldn't find a USB camera card. I don't know. Maybe there might be... Um, 
Just give me a sec, there might be something I can use. Just one second. Okay, I found something that I can probably try out. This is like a little um, USB-C and it's got a micro TF thing in the back. So I'll see if that works. I don't even know what's on this card. So that just, I guess that just goes in there. Flashing. Got a disc. Okay, so let's just record. So let's go back to this view and change our camera again. Where'd that little camera cable go? Why did that just turn off? Sorry, camera was playing up. Okay, so we need to hit the record button on, on here. Might need some setting up, it's not letting me record. Uh, who knows? Who knows? More setting up to do, people, with this. Um, yeah. Maybe I need to reboot it. Jeez, that was quick booting up. Does it record now? No. Okay. Who knows? I don't know. So anyway, it would need some sort of USB drive, and this is probably not the right thing for it. And I can't find, for the life of me, my uh, USB adapter. So, yeah, I don't know where it's gone. I can't find it. 
I thought I had it just here. Anyway, doesn't matter. We are fine. Okay. I think that's probably about it anyway uh, for now. Um, we shall persevere. Hey, you got inverted popes? Um, I don't know why that's not showing up on the on the thing. Weird. Um, yeah, no one's asking any questions anyway, so um, what I'll probably do is we'll probably just we'll finish it up. I will come back and do some more stuff with this later. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Ba -ba -dum -bum.